And I think that's what those people are talking about. But I think like you were saying, that's not necessarily helpful for someone who's struggling to even believe. Right. Because you're saying, yeah, 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 just do it because in, in a thousand years, we'll all be in heaven and it'll be great. everybody and welcome to Epic Every Day. I'm Liz Frerix and this is my husband And I'm Evan. Evan. <laughs> <laughs> good, good morning. Yay, it's Monday. I'm That's so right. going to convert all you people to actually being thrilled at the fact that you have a week full of opportunity. I hope so. I'm, I'm starting to come around to it, although I don't know. I, <laughs> I like Friday too. Maybe you'll start liking Friday and we I'll can start even each Monday. other out, yeah. you know, right now. Yeah, maybe. It could happen. <laughs> so this week, as we told you guys last week, we're going to talk about kind of our worldview and how we put all that stuff together. So today, since it's Monday and we are working our way through the CSCs, we're going to talk about being calm, you know, having peace, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and we are going to talk about how faith is not actually a blind leap. Yeah. Even though a lot of people... It's described that way. Yeah, describe it that way. A leap of faith. But that's mm -hmm. not exactly what it is. Exactly. Biblically. Yeah, they used to... That's one of my major pet peeves. Maybe coming because of, you know, coming from a place where I wasn't... I didn't become a believer until I was in high school. And I remember going to college and people being like, well, you just believe. You just trust God. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Like, I don't, I can't do that. I don't understand. I mean, I have shared on here before. It took me until after my first child was born before I could say, okay, I trust God. Mm. You know? Yeah. So that, yeah, that has, has to do with a lot. But yeah, people are not default trustworthy. Right. In your mind. And, uh. No, they're default untrustworthy. Sure. <laughs> yeah. How does one come around then to to find God trustworthy? Well, I think part of it is kind of figuring out what your issues are behind that. Like, that was the thing that made me so mad in college was people would be like, why can't, you know, why do non-Christians or Christians that struggle with this, why can't they just believe that God is good? Yeah. And it's like, well, you have to look at, you know, what are you afraid of when you're talking about faith? Like... For me, it was a fear of letting someone else control my life, which has never, ever, ever gone well, with the exception of the Lord. Yeah. You know? And, and what else can you base it on? I mean, these are your your core memories, your right, basic exactly. experience Right, exactly. Exactly. I mean, I would imagine if people are honest, a lot of people would have this similar thing. I mean, who, who, who do we know that's 100% trustworthy? We don't right. have an experience like that. Exactly. Yeah, and I think the more people you've had who either seemed trustworthy up to a certain point and then kind of fell off the cliff into like, whoa, that was a really bad idea to trust them, or people who were really back and forth, like you automatically impute that to your relationship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, your experience with people, you expect that God's going to be that way too. Yeah, but then, so how... How do we? How did you get over that? Well, I think part of it is recognizing that faith isn't a blind leap. Like we were just mm -hmm. talking about, you know, they people say like, oh, you should just trust, but yeah, you have to. The analogy that I really like is the um, ice skating analogy. You know, if you go out onto a pond of ice, and you don't just walk out onto a pond of ice in the winter and be like, well, I hope this is gonna hold me. Yay! Let's just test it out by mm -hmm. walking on it. You know, first you maybe put a hole through the ice and measure the ice before you actually walk out onto it. You know, check to see how long the temperatures have been cold for. There yeah. are other things you can look at to be like, is this is this ice safe? Yeah. And if you're not used to trusting people, trusting God feels a lot like walking out onto this ice and hoping that it's, it's not mm -hmm. going to break, you know? So... Yes, that's one of the things that I absolutely adore about Christianity is that there is room to question and to study and to learn and to measure that ice. Yeah, like, right. And God is is um, is proving himself trustworthy 
over and over again for all time. We're not just taking some guy's word for it, the priest right. or, or the rabbi or whatever. Exactly. There's well, and the other more ways, you... like with that pond, there's ways to get um, a more um, objective or un, unadulterated fact of some kind that's just based on reality. Right. Exactly. It's not up to the the game warden or whatever to say, oh, it's safe. Go ahead. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, you know, because God is the one who, it's his pond. Where he's the one we're trusting. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that really helped me was just to be like, okay, Lord, I am going to tell you right now I do not trust you. Like To admit to him and to myself to say, this is where I'm at. And then to ask him to do something about that. Mm -hmm. The question I wrote down was, how do you know that you know what you think you know? And mm -hmm. that's a question we've all got to answer. But so like in your instance, so you've got people saying just believe, but they, that's bad advice because they're, they have, maybe it's not quite as drastic as, as yours, but they've had to have gone through a similar experience where. Right. They didn't have faith, and then they did. And something brought them across that bridge. Yeah. And those are the kind of things I thought we'd talk about. So if you're trying to actually measure the ice, one of the things that I love is kind of the, I call it the wheel of revelation. Okay. Um, in John 8, verse 31, this is one of those, well, 31 and 32, it's one of those passages that everybody knows. Um to the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And we don't really look at that as an answer for how do we have faith. But uh, when I was in college and I read that verse, I was like, oh, okay, I get it. So, you know, you get a piece of information, which is kind of like the top of your wheel. And then... Say you're going to go about the scientific method. You test it and then, you know, figure out what your findings are and move forward from there. And faith is kind of the same way. Like God gives us this information. And I think the Lord was so gracious with me. Like he gave me baby steps. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe the first thing to try is what if I like, you know, the Bible says that we grow through his word. So what if I actually spent time in his word every day? And so, um, you know, Jesus starts with, if you hold to my teaching, like, so you start by actually applying that information. You, you have his teaching, you hold to it, then you know the truth and the truth will set you free. So after you start applying it, suddenly things start making more sense. Yeah. And I wish it was easier. Like, I wish you didn't actually have to, you know, test it by applying it. Yeah. It would be so nice if it was an entirely mental exercise, but it's like any relationship. There's that experiential aspect. You can't build a relationship with another person without spending time with that person. You know, it's just, it's the nature of relationships. Yeah. Something similar. I was looking at the Hebrews 11 uh, today, thinking about this too, and it's similar there. Faith is the assurance that what we hope for will come about and the certainty that what we cannot see exists. And I think that fits in that wheel too. Although there's this, this part where God's always asking us. So the part of the faith, I think that people key in on when they say would well, just believe is that last part where, and this whole passage is about characters from the Bible, trusting God and never quite seeing the, the fulfillment of the promise, but right. believing the promise anyway. And I think that's what those people are talking about. But I think, like you were saying, that's not necessarily helpful for someone who's struggling to even believe. Right. Because you're saying, yeah, 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 just do it because in, in a thousand years, we'll all be in heaven and it'll be great. I mean, and so in that passage you were sharing, that's the amazing thing about God meeting us where we're at. Right. And, and you know, wanting us to be faithful and him then being faithful in return Mm -hmm. and our life being enriched. Um, but I was just really encouraged by this. You know, it's there's going to be parts of it that we don't understand and that we don't see. But right. there, 
I mean, but there are passages even in here where um, people see the fulfillment of the promise. I mean, Abraham yeah. and Sarah were 100 years old and they couldn't have children and then they had a child. Right. They didn't see their descendants, you know, innumerable as the stars in the sky or the sand on the sea. Right. But, or the seashore. <laughs> <laughs> but they saw the child. Right. And, and yeah. And that's, yeah, faith builds on faith, which is, I think, part of that wheel that you were right. talking about. Yeah, the more you practice it. And the great thing is you start, you know, as you see God being faithful and as you apply these things, like the little things, the little tests, kind of like we were talking about last week with little vulnerability tests. Like you yeah. do little tests with the Lord and then he calls you to greater and greater faith as your your muscle gets your faith muscle gets stronger. Mm -hmm. It's not like he's like, go from zero to sixty, please, you know, in in one act of faith straight. Like right. he lets us take little little baby steps. And then as we take those baby steps, we actually come to trust him, not just yeah. like that you know that this one thing is true or that the bible itself is true like you start trusting this is who god is he says that he wants my best he's always working things out for the good of those who mm -hmm. love him you know he's always working things out for my good and he's a good god like he's holy so he's never going to do anything that's going to you know harm me in some way different things like that yeah when you that start you've learned trusting. along the way. Right, right. Yeah. But it, it doesn't, you don't start like, hey, I'm going to jump off this cliff <laughs> like, yeah. and trust that God's going to catch me. Mm -hmm. You do it piece by little piece. Yeah. One of the little pieces that was a major influence in my faith was in, in college getting derailed by skeptics. And yeah. it had a lot to do with the creation evolution debate. And I don't, you know, we don't have time to get into that because that's a whole another week of shows. But just uh, my faith was not strong enough to withstand some of these questions. Yeah. And all they were was questions. Right. And it wasn't actually scholarship or, or any, it wasn't offering a replacement for my faith. Like here, put your faith in Darwin or something. It was just asking hard questions. Right. But then asking God for help. I mean, after stumbling around in the dark for quite a while, but asking God for help finally and him uh, putting other resources on my path that that had answers to those questions. It, yeah. You know, and building up my faith slowly on a solid foundation of 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 the of the truth. Right. Yeah. Definitely. That um, one of the things that I had written down is Chuck Missler talks about having a secret notebook, which mm -hmm. I love. Oh, yeah. Like. You know, where all you do is you write down the questions that you have about the Bible and you don't show it to anybody and you just pray that God will answer those questions and then, you know, keep your eyes and ears open. And he said he's had some of the craziest experiences with God answering those questions, like somebody at a restaurant talking at the table next to him, talking about that exact passage sure. and explaining it in a way that he was like, oh, my yeah. goodness. That totally, and now I understand. Yeah. So just to clarify, the way that notebook works is he says on, you know, you know, I have two facing pages in a notebook. And on one, on the left side, you'll always write your questions. And then you'll leave the right side blank so that you can fill in the answers later. And you just, you date, put the date down when you ask the question. And then you can continue to pray about it. And right. then when you understand the answer, you put that over there on the right side and put a date. And, but yeah, you don't show it to anybody. And, and uh, yeah. I, uh, I started one of those. I think I just <laughs> had a few things written down. But but in my mind, uh, I've experienced that, and I think we both have. It's yeah, pretty amazing. Definitely. Well, and one of the other things is that faith is fruit of the Holy Spirit. So, you know, as you grow in your relationship with God, you can ask Him to increase your faith. Yeah, that's the thing I feel like was a huge um, light bulb for me was that you can ask for more faith. And God's yeah. like, yeah. Let's go. Seek out information about your faith. If there's something you're uncomfortable with, push into that a little bit and actually take it before God and ask yeah. for understanding. And there are 
amazing teachers out there that God has raised up to help us understand the world around us. I really love that the Lord, you know, that's, that's one of the things that we we're going to talk about tomorrow. Like we don't have to be afraid of information because the Bible is written by God. So yes, definitely. If you have a problem with a Bible verse, look for information about it, pray about it. Cause God is, will be totally faithful to provide that for you. I mean, just like he did with Thomas, you know, mm-hmm. we always talk about doubting Thomas and how, um, how he should have believed. But at the same time, like that's how Jesus treats our doubts. Like, we need to see that as a flip it on its head. Look at how Jesus talks to Thomas. Like He showed him evidence of right. his new body. Yeah. Exactly. So if you're having doubts, pray that God shows you the evidence because yeah. it's out there. Yeah. And if anybody tells you, you know, if you're at a place where you're like, I don't know if I trust God and I don't know if I want to jump off of a cliff. Like, that is not, that is not the answer. Faith is not a blind leap. That's right. It is a one step at a time. And it's based on information. It's right. not based on your feelings. Exactly. So, uh, we are so glad that you guys were able to be here with us today. And if you would like more information, you can always hit us up, you know, send us an email. If there's something in particular, we may have some resource that, uh, we've used to look into yeah, the same might, question. Uh, yeah, we, we love collecting information, so and yes. we love dis- dispensing it too. We would love to hear if you had a have a question or or anything. Yes. Um, but definitely, and there's ways to do that in, in the description. Um, we're on Twitter and we're on Facebook, and we've got a group that we'd love for you to join for this podcast uh, discussion group. Uh, it's just Facebook groups, and it's called Epic, Epic Every Day. Please join that and uh, talk about the episode. Yeah, and we would love to hear how the CSCs are affecting your life, you know? How'd you do with being complete this weekend? If you have found this podcast helpful, well, first of all, thank you to all the people that are sharing it. We really, really appreciate it. If you have found it helpful, please do share it, you know? Even if it's just with one or two people that you know it would be something that would be good for them, pass it along. Yes, please. We really appreciate it. All right, well, thanks for listening today. We'll be back tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to talk about all truth is God's truth. Otherwise known as, don't throw the baby out, bathwater. There we go. All right. We love you guys. Have an awesome Monday. Focus on that 1%. Just being a little bit more trusting in God. And, or a little bit more asking for uh, help doing that. You don't just yes, do it like we were exactly. talking about at the beginning. God is there to help. Yep. All right. Thanks for listening. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.